Today we're out on the driving range and it's a breezy day, so we figured, hey, we'll have Thomas, the professional golfer, tell us how to hit shots into a crosswind. Golfers, if you enjoy this content, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, and then subscribe to our channel. Hey golfers, Drew Mahol here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're outside on the driving range and it's a breezy, almost windy day out here. Uh, so we figured we'd have Thomas showcase how to hit shots into a crosswind. Yeah, I'm just checking the wind direction right now and I notice it's going straight this way, yep. straight out of the south. Mm -hmm. And we're hitting straight west. Yep. So we know the wind is going this direction. Yes. So we're gonna learn how to hit shots or see yeah. what numbers are affected by hitting shots with the wind or trying to fight it. And that's, it's nice with TrackMan, we have the normalization button, the kind of the, the setting there, you can easily toggle on and off so you can see how is this ball flying with, you know, the wind impacted and then without the wind impacted. And you can see how much of a difference that is. So, and one of the things I'm curious about, especially with left to right crosswind that we have today, is is it better to kind of try and almost hit a draw, sort of holding it against that wind, or is it better to just play the fade and have the wind kind of almost exaggerate the fade, but still try to play it that way. Uh, and I think we'll find that out today. I think it's gonna be dependent on the player's skill level. So some golfers, all the only shot they hit is a, a fade. Yeah. So they're gonna have to hit that fade. Yeah. They, they can't really fight it with the draw. But if you can shape the ball both directions, I would prefer to hit that shot where you hit it into the wind so it's a little bit easier to control and know what the bullfly is gonna do. Yeah, because there's, I mean, there's certainly less movement that way from, I mean, it's, it's more of a straight line shot when you do it that way. but. Um, yeah, I'll be curious to see exactly how much of this is impacted. So, uh, are you ready to hit some shots and show us how it's done? Let's do it. Oh, the wind took that one a little bit to the right on me. Yeah, oh yeah. Curious where this ends up with normalization on because, yeah, okay. So it's got you probably 10 yards to the right of the target. Um, I would obviously see that that ended up farther right than that, but yep. um, so that's your kind of uh, stock seven iron there. Yeah, pretty stock shot at just kind of at the target. Okay, so yep. here, like we said, wind is coming off your left, um, aiming at that target. In your scenario, the kind of caliber golfer that you are, what are you trying to do here? Are you going to play that draw or are you going to play that fade? I'm going to probably try and play a little lower draw into the wind. Okay. I could probably, you know, I'll hit seven iron just because I was hitting seven iron, but I may even play a six iron and hit it kind of a little bit lower and take the wind completely out of play and have it kind of just fly it a little bit lower. Okay. Yep. See, if what I'm seeing there, ball flight, that was a pretty straight flight. Yeah, definitely was starting out as if it was going to drawer, and then it just kind of stayed yeah. right there. And the neat thing with um, the TrackMan here is you can kind of see how the TrackMan picks up the flight with the wind considered. Yep. And then with the normalization on, it kind of reverts back to what normalized ball flight would be. So you'll, your ball on here was kind of flying. I mean, it's a little bit right of the target, right? So it's kind of flying pretty straight, probably in that again ten yards right of the target. And then once the normalization kicked in, it you can see the draw, and it's basically at the target now. Right. So it's kind of cool there, but so. When you're hitting a shot back into the wind, do you hit the draw differently than you would normally? Or is it just like the, your same setup, same draw swing that you would typically use? Well, my normal shot is a little draw. So I, I feel more comfortable hitting a little draw than, I hit, than hitting a, a little fade. Um, so most of the time I will kind of play that. If the wind is say out of the right now, mm -hmm. in the complete opposite circumstances, then it's when I'd probably maybe hit a little, try a little fade into it as well. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So. I'm gonna turn off the normalization really quick on this and you can see on the screen how that ball flight changes. I actually wanted to show you this. You can kind of see a little bit there. So see that? Tiny can, little drawer? Yeah. Can yep. you, so that's that was with it uh, not normalized. And you see that normalized, then it curves over a little bit more even. Right. So that's, uh, I mean, that's that's how this works. That's how the normalization works, but also that's how that, that draw is gonna be affected. There's not a ton of difference there. Now, I would imagine when we do a fade here, that fade's gonna go from a little bit with that with normalization on, with it off, it's gonna be way over there. Yeah, I'm gonna guess riding the wind is probably gonna exaggerate even more. That's moving. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely some left to right movement on that one. Interesting there. Felt like it had a pretty good, what I would consider a little fade there on that shot. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely good. So interesting that and I'm looking at how the dispersion map changes a little bit by where those shots are. So that, that draw with normalized on, it almost is on the line. And then with it off, it's kind of, I would say, yeah, about 10 yards right. That, that fade actually wasn't that much different. It was kind of a similar line, just the way it got there was a little bit different with the wind. But obviously the one with normalization off is a little bit farther right. But right. Um, so now in, in terms of tips with like hitting a fade with a left to right wind, what would you suggest on that now? Is there anything different again? Or you just, you just recommend put people hit their stock shot and aim X yards left? Yeah, you kind of got to judge you know, how much that wind is going to influence it. So if, if you don't feel comfortable hitting a shot into the wind, so drawing against a, yeah. a wind out of the left, uh, you definitely want to aim a little bit too further to the left and play it. So if your normal shot is, say, a 10-yard fade, you might need to give it 20, 25 yards further left. Yeah. And, and that will kind of really kind of exaggerate and get yeah. you there. Yeah, because one thing we should note, too, a fade has more spin on it. And when a wind is, you know, with the wind, it's going to be more impacted with more spin. Right. So that should, in theory, grab or, you know, exaggerate that fade quite a bit more versus a draw. So a has less spin already, but then B, you're hitting it back into the wind, it's gonna neutralize that a little bit. Yeah, and we're talking about a straight side wind. What happens if it's a side wind when the wind's helping versus when it's hurting? If you hit a fade into a shot where it's hurting, ball is going to spin a lot more and it's gonna come up a lot shorter. Yeah. The wind's helping, it's still gonna kind of glide with the wind and still go a right. decent distance. That's another thing to consider. We got basically a straight crosswind day, which is, uh, making, well, this is a good kind of uh, barometer for this video, but also it shows um, just the effect of a straight crosswind. So. Right, yeah. I definitely feel more comfortable hitting that little drawer into it, but there's more than one way to do it. you got to play to your strengths when you're playing on, on the golf course. If you feel comfortable hitting a fade with the wind, absolutely do it. Just make sure you commit to the shot. Mm -hmm. If you like to hit that little drawer against the wind, that's probably going to be a little bit easier to control your ball flight. All right, we've got the data up, Thomas, on three shots here. So I'll let you kind of take that, okay. give your sort of professional golfer experience. Perfect. And expertise, and give we'll see um, some of the things that you know. Because I know one of the things you quick took a look at and asked about, you know, landing angle and things like that, which is something we didn't discuss yet. Right, yeah, so if I'm looking at the landing angle, so right now the normalization button is on, so normal. When I was hitting the, the fade with the wind, my landing angle was 50.7. Okay. That's, that's a pretty decent landing angle. Yeah. If we switch it now to normalization off, so that means exactly. it's based exactly on the exactly with, with the wind, my landing angle went up five degrees. So it went to 55.6. So okay. it's going to come in, because I'm hitting a fade with that wind, it's going to come in a little steeper. It's going to stop a little faster. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's look at the drawer as well and see what happens. So with the drawer, when I was hitting a little drawer into the, into the wind, um, normalization button on, 47.8 landing angle, 48.9 landing angle with it off. So it really didn't change too mm -hmm. much uh, compared to where the fade, when, when, when you rolled that wind, yeah. what happened is the ball was influenced kind of coming down sure. to the ground. So, so something to note, I guess, if you're one of those players that you're trying to decide how I should handle this, should I hit the, the, the draw back into the wind or should I hit a fade kind of riding that wind if it's a left to right wind? If, that, if those are the choices you're just trying to pick from, uh, there is that chance. It seems like riding the wind uh, is going to have a greater impact on the flight, whether it's the landing angle, whether it's the curvature on the ball. There's going to be more of that effect to it, um, which is something to think about, and it probably has a little bit more of some volatility in there that you really, it's a little bit risky business, I think, versus if you're able to consistently hit that draw into the wind in this circumstance, I think that might be the more reliable play. Yeah, and then let's kind of look here at the uh, the carry distance. So if you're riding the wind, the wind's going with it, it's going to help a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So when I hit the fade shot, normalization button on, my carry distance was 167.7. Turn it off, it was 165.6. So it was almost the same, right? Yeah. So let's take a look and see what happened when, we, when I was hitting that little drawer. So normalization button on, hey, I know the numbers pretty well. 180.0 carry. There you go. It's, it's pretty, pretty good right there. That's my number. Uh, if I turn it off though, 175.4. So because I was fighting the wind a little bit, the ball didn't go quite as far, but it was easy to control. Sure. And ball flight was a little, little bit better. So something to consider there too. Again, if you are going to hit that, 
the shot that fights the trajectory of the, or fights the wind direction, excuse me, um, your ball might dip in yardage just a little bit based on fighting that wind, um, depending on how that spin of the ball is working. But um, yeah, any other insights on there, Thomas, that we should take note of for golfers on this? This is a, a decision that actually comes up a lot more often than you really think. I mean, you're playing golf, it, if it's 18 holes of, of golf in a round, and it's windy like this, you're gonna have this decision, you know, five to 10 times out there. Right, yeah. And I'm just clicking back and forth from normalization on and off here um, on, the, on the flight shape, essentially. And I'm seeing with the fade, how uh, the last little part of the, of the, sh of the shape really kind of curved pretty hard to the right at the end yeah. when I was sitting in, in the fade. So with, when I turn it off, what happens is that that blue line moves further to the right. So if, if we look at the, at the drawer, we'll notice where the normalization button is on. That's my normal shot and, and yeah. no wind. You can see that, that drawer tendency of that thing starting right and then curving back a little bit. We turn it off. Now we'll notice how it, it basically just kind of flew dead straight. Yeah. And at the end, it was almost like it was just yeah, coming it was back kind of like, a little it was, bit. In reality, the ball kind of probably drew a little bit, and then the wind grabbed more of it and kind of ended more kind of with a fade almost. It was almost like a draw then a fade all at once when you do that. But that's the, the effect of trying to fight that wind is you're gonna, your initial shot shape will take effect, and then the wind will kind of take over towards the end of the ball flight. Right. And yeah, I'm looking at the dis dispersion here at the end. I definitely like the, the draw version because it's closer to the center line. Correct. So that's the orange dot. The blue version was a little further to the right, and that was the fade version. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, I mean, this is a very, the sample size is pretty small, but these yep. are the quick instructionals here from, from Mr. Thomas Campbell himself on how to deal with a crosswind. A couple of options, basically. You can ride the wind, or you can kind of fight the wind, depending on if, for example, if the wind's coming down from the right, hitting that fade would be fighting the wind, and hitting that draw would be riding the wind. So a couple of decisions to make, you can see the differences in terms of riding the wind versus fighting the wind, what you should do. Um, but uh, Thomas, thanks for providing your insight today. Uh, golfers now know a little bit more of how to uh, you know, assess that situation when they come about it. Yep, golfers, just make sure you play to your strengths.